uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my wife will just say, have a good night. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's about one o'clock for me. So I just feel like uh, uh, I will give a talk uh, in a dream. OK? So uh, my talk is understanding and uh, bypass structure ID randomization with generic and uh, old school methods. Mm, just to make sure you are at the right room. So my name is Wang Yong. I'm a security engineer of Alibaba Security. Currently, I focus on Android and browser vulnerability research. I was speaker at uh, several security conferences. Uh, most of the time, I talked about uh, how to root the newest Android devices. So last year, I, po I proposed a new technique uh, based on um, um, MMU features and uh, talk about how to root the newest Android 8 devices. Then there's a kernel uh, add some mitigation against it. And this year, I talk about how to root the newest Android Lite devices. Recently, Linux kernel also introduced some mitigation about my bug. Uh, maybe because the bug I found in Android kernel was uh, nominated at the Pony Award this year. So today, I will just talk about a WebKit browser, um, a lot, of, lot about uh, how to build a remote routing against the Android 8 devices. So here is the agenda. Firstly, I will briefly review the core steps of a JavaScript, JavaScript core exploitation basis and discuss why we need to predict a valid structure ID. Then I will detail the structure ID randomization, uh, which was introduced in the early of this year. Uh, oh, sorry. Next, I will detail my new generic bypass. Let's just summarize the talk. So the first part. So what is JavaScript core? Basically, it's a JavaScript engine of WebKit, uh, which is Apple's open source web browser. And the Safari is based on WebKit. Like other JavaScript engine, JavaScript core supports almost all the features of Ecomas Script 6. And the JavaScript core is also complex. It consists of four tiers. The first one is the low level interpreter, then baseline, DFG, and FTL JIT compilers. So in the last two years, lots of exploit bugs were found in DFG and FTL JIT compilers. Uh, you can easily find the pork war exploit code on GitHub. Here is the typical JIT bug, the pork code I get from Lucas blog, uh, which can directly crash the engine at that time. Here is the minimized port code. Uh, in the last line, the in operation is used to check whether a property exists on the object or its prototype. However, when JavaScript engine initializes the internal prototype objects, uh, it forgets to mark the prototype of a date as a prototype and the in operation will be converted to the has indexed property loaded by DFG engine. So the problem is that the tiny mistake can make a DFG JIT compiler think this load is safe and without any side effect. But it's not the truth. So combining with the JIT compiler optimization, this tiny mistake can be converted to a typical type confusion bug. The ex exploitation is straightforward. Just abuse the element transition like box value to unbox value or vice versa. Here is the ex exploit slipid. The, the four loops uh, make the DFG JIT compiler optimize the function. Through the element transition, uh, we can leak the addresses of JS objects here. 
and we can fix some, some JS objects. So without a structure ID randomization, the exploit steps are first, we create many differently shaped JS objects. Then we prepare the craft container, let's trigger the bug and gain just the one craft JS object. And then we build the ADDR of and uh, fake object uh, primitives and uh, build the arbitrary address uh, read writer primitives and uh, tackle the garbage collector issue. Now for Mac OS, we can easily gain the arbitrary code uh, execution. However, for iOS, we have to figure out uh, a way to bypass PSA mitigation. So why we need to create some uh, differently shaped JS objects? The answer is the fake JS object uh, leads our proper shape. In one word, without a structure and the randomization, we can predict and use the internal shape objects without uh, triggering any bugs. Now the second part. Before talking about uh, structure ID randomization, let me review the internal basis of a JS object. Here is a, a JS object O with two lambda properties. The internal uh, layout is like this. The first field is just CO. It consists of several fields. The structure ID field describes the shape of this JS object. The indexing type describes how we can access the indexed properties. And the JS type just describes the internal type of this JS object. And the last two fields are used to mark the internal state of this object. The second one is the butterfly pointer. Uh, basically, it's used to store the indexed uh, properties and the lambda properties that can't be inland. The last two fields store the values of the two inland lambda properties. So you can see the shape information is not directly stored in the JS object. In JavaScript code, the shape is represented by the internal object lambda structure, like the highland class of V8 uh, engine, uh, which is the, the JavaScript engine of Chrome. Assume there is another object P with the same lambda properties. Now, object O and the object P can share the same structure. And uh, for optimization, all the structures are stored in a table, and uh, the index is labeled as structure ID. So look up the structure ID table, we can finally figure out the layout uh, of the properties for a specific uh, JS object. In 2016, Samuel introduced the Structure ID Springing Technique, uh, which can uh, guess or predict the structure ID. It's based on the fact that, <coughs> sorry, the structure IDs can be allocated sequentially on the fresh state in the rendering process. So creating many different shape objects can predict the structure ID. Uh, it's, it's just like this, this code. Now the structure ID is add, added seven interval bits, and the structure pointer is also added, this, added the same bits. So without uh, knowing the interval bits, running gets just equals to the evaluated shape. That means accessing the properties of the world because the methods of the JS object will lead to crash. Luca talk, talked about how to bypass the randomization uh, with the uh, bug specs for the way at this, at the most like this year. 
the the bug the root cause of this bug is the conditional branch can can skip the spill during register allocation. Uh, it can make some stack data remaining uninitialized. So combining with optimization of DFG data compiler, it can be used to build an OOB read primitive to leak a valid structure ID. Also, Luca gives some attack ideas. Uh, one is that abusing the inferior types and uh, JIT optimization to bypass it. Unfortunately, the inferior types mechanism was removed. Now, let me introduce my generical bypass. Ab abusing the other feature of JIT optimization might bypass it. So how about uh, not taking the JIT compiler into consideration? So just thinking out, uh, outside the JIT compiler, we like to uh, bypass other randomization mitigations. So, so for instance, uh, address space layout or randomization. Uh, the first way is to find the weakness of the implementation. Or we just leak some data to calculate the slide to bypass it. So for structure ID randomization, the weakness is that uh, there is about a 1% success rate per each attempt. So if there is a way to test each guess and uh, do not make the process crash, the randomization can be easily bypassed. The other way is to leak the valid structure ID of one known shape JS object. So when I started to learn the implementation of structure ID randomization, I found this uh, function. The function is just to test if a structure ID is valid. The most important point is that the invalid structure pointer is never used. That means an invalid structure ID will not cause any problems. So it's the optimal function to bypass structure ID randomization. However, this function is never used. So does a fake JS object without a valid strategy make the process crash? The answer is not. Uh, the object can still arrive until garbage collector works. So here is a, a question. So how to hang with the semi-faked object? Well, a most basic fake question do was the internal building functions rely on the valid structure ID? So if, God bless, there is a function that requires a structure ID, so how can, how can we find it? The first thing flash on my mind is the prototype. Look at the left code. Object O has three lambda properties and two index properties. There is a low slice function implementation for object O. So when it gets called, an exception will throw out. However, even object O is not a just array type, we can still call the slice function of array prototype using O as the parameter. I know lots of JS objects have implemented the two-string function. For instance, we can get the source code of one JS function. And I think because the source code is supplied by developer, probably you will not need to look up the structure information. This inspires me if there is a type which the implementation of a two-string uh, is not required a structure ID. 
I can craft the field pointing to anywhere uh, during object thinking. That means I can easily leak some internal information without uh, causing any side effect. After, after reading the source fields, I found a proper candidate. The implementation of a symbols uh, prototype. At point one, JavaScript code tries to convert the general JS object to a symbol object. Then the, sim the symbol's description will be returned. Let's di dive into the detail. The converting is, a, is a very simple. It's just to check whether the, the JS object is a symbol type. In the release code, the assertion does not exist. And the description is made from the private uh, lemon field. Assume there is a symbol with the hello world description. The layout is a printing symbol. So the attack idea is like this. We fake a symbol JS object with valid structure ID. Just let the pri private lamp pointer point it to other controlled fields. Here is another general fake uh, JS object. The fixed butterfly pointer is pointed to a lone JS, JS field, JS object. Now we can directly leak the valid structure ID. Here is the detail. Uh, I want to leak the valid structure ID of one double array. The first two inline properties are used to build the first fixed symbol object without a valid structure ID. The last two are used to build the general object. I even don't uh, care about the type here. After faking those two JS objects, the second fake object is assigned to the m underscore uid field. Now it's pretty easy to, to leak the value struct ID of the double array. Now we can leak the valid structure ID of one known shape JS object. It's just abusing the feature of runtime, not related to JIT compiler. But the limitation is obvious. It requires two semi fixed objects. Uh, most of the time, it's not a real problem. Like the previous, previously mentioned bug, I can fix uh, any number of JS objects. So how about uh, just uh, one semi fixed uh, object? And uh, during reading the source fields, I figure out the reason why the real source code of a host or built-in type func JS function is never returned. If it's a built-in function, uh, you can say JS executable dereferenced. That means it's a JS object, not the internal object of engine. Meanwhile, the implementation of identifier is just a string. This is the process of getting the source code of a built-in function. Because the function executable is inherited from JS seal, we can use just one JS object here. So here is the attacking plan. The key point is that uh, we use the same semi fake JS object as the string object. That means the butterfly pointer is actually important to the low end shape JS object, which we want we wanted to leak. And the most important point is we can use two normal JS objects to oh so, sorry to emulate to emulate the internal objects there is a potential problem because the fake js object must be a function type not all the bits of the strings lengths are controllable they may cause an ob issue but it will not crush because uh, we, do, we don't tr need to trigger OOB read here. 
So the advantage of this bypass method is upwards. It just leads, leads one semi-fake JS object without valid structure ID. And the internal objects is not required. Uh, all of them are just JS objects. So the exploit steps with the world without structure ID randomization is first prepare the craft container and the helper JS objects, then trigger the bug and gain one semi fake JS object. Let's call the two string function of functions prototype and leak the valid struct ID. Then just fix the semi fake JS object with the valid struct ID. And now the left steps are the same as before. Cool, the last, last part. So takeaways, uh, the costs of JavaScript engine exploitation have been discussed. Structure ID randomization has been fully discussed. The idea of thinking out the JIT compiler and the structure ID randomization have been detailed. Here are the references. So thank you and uh, enjoy the conference. So any questions?